Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am so excited to be talking to you all about how I studied and ultimately succeeded, relative word, in the IB diploma program. For those of you that are new here, my name is Seneca and I'm a junior at UC Berkeley studying molecular and cell biology. And I did the IB program graduating in May 2018. So I know that a lot of the different exams have changed since then, but I thought, you know, just might be a good way to share some of the techniques that I picked up and some of the tips that I used to study for all of my exams and ultimately pass them. Definitely subscribe to my channel and also like this video to see more content like this. I have a lot of fun plans for the next few months. So first I'll probably just give a little bit of context. I went to a public high school in the United States based on my conversations with my classmates at Berkeley, a lot of whom also did the IB internationally or in other schools in the US. I can say that a lot of these tips will extend to anyone studying anywhere, which is pretty awesome. So for context, the subjects that I did were at higher level or HL, I did English Literature A, French B, History of the Americas, and these were all classes that were chosen for me to take higher level by my school. When I was personally doing the IB, we didn't have a lot of choice with HL versus SL just because my school was a smaller IB program. And then of course, for standard level or SL, I did biology, math, and visual art. So I think that I'm going to kind of divide this video into a few different sections so that you guys can skip around to the subjects that you're most interested or the tips that you most want to hear. I'll put timestamps below in the description and please feel free to skip around. The first thing that I think I'm going to discuss is how I studied generally for the whole IB. So my two top tips that I absolutely recommend you do are to obtain the syllabi for all of your classes. If your teachers don't give you these, ask them for it, or you can find them online. I can link sources that I use to find them below. And then also to do past papers. So first off, syllabi are really important because the IB lists all of the different topics and all of the different things that they will test you on on the syllabus. And it's really important to go through and to look at the concepts, look at the things that they want you to learn from different concepts. For example, for math, they will literally go through and list equations. They'll list things like the binomial distribution that you're expected to know for your exam, and they can't test you on material that isn't on the syllabus. So it's very, very important to know what you could be tested on. And if you don't have a super strong knowledge of something on the syllabus, revise that and make sure that you know it before taking exams. And then my second general tip is to do past papers. Oh my gosh, okay, this one is an absolute essential. If you take only one thing from this video, it is do as many past papers as possible because the IB asks very similar questions year to year. They use the same phrasing in their questions. And if you're not used to it, it can catch you a little bit off guard the first time you see their questions. So I will link some of the sources I use to find past papers below. You don't have to pay a ridiculous amount of money to access them. There are other ways of finding papers on the internet and I will link them below. <laughs> and so highly recommend doing this. I think that it's really essential, especially for subjects like math or foreign language where the questions they ask are pretty much identical year to year and is a fantastic way to get that exposure and know what you're going into during the exam so that you're not taken aback. For example, one of my friends had not done a ton of past papers. When they went to take the exam, they discovered that the exams were printed on both sides of the paper, but they didn't know this. So they actually missed out on an entire page of questions. And that's definitely something that you want to avoid. So do those past papers. So I think my first topic that I'll talk about is going to be how I studied for history. So my history module, as I mentioned, was History of the Americas. I did the 20th century module as my first year. Um, I think it was 20th century wars, specifically in Europe, and then History of the Americas. And my first tip for history is to figure out what case studies or specific areas that you're studying because these are things that you should know super in depth. They're things that you should be able to compare and contrast for essay questions, important. And if you're not exactly sure what your case studies are, 
ask your teachers. This is really important to know. For example, mine were the Spanish Civil War and World War II in first year. It will make your life a lot easier when you're writing essays to have those in mind. The number one thing that I did when I was studying for history, this is kind of my second tip, is I made mind maps. So I know a lot of people hear mind maps and they're like, no, I'm not going to do that. That doesn't help me learn. And I am totally with you, okay? I promise. I'm not a mind maps type of person, but when it comes to history and especially IB history, this was so, so helpful for me. For example, I would have little branches going out from that center saying different causes and then further evidence. So for example, I would have causes of World War I and then the assassination of Franz Ferdinand and then I would have polarization and all of these different things so that it was really easy for me to go through and discuss those and when I was writing my essays, visualize those kind of diagrams in my head with specific evidence. And I promise you that even if you think mind maps won't work, please do give them a shot because they worked really well for me. And one really important tip that I particularly have when it comes to evidence is for history, know your dates, names, places, and really just make your essays as full of evidence as you can while still maintaining a coherent argument because Ultimately, evidence shows that you know the history and you know the movements well, and the IB examiners will reward you for that. My third tip for history specifically is to write questions for yourself. Sometimes you'll exhaust all of the different practice essay questions you have available, and then you'll think, okay, I'm done. But there's always going to be one topic where you might feel a little weaker than the others. And for me, this was very, very true. So what I used to do is I would write my own essay questions. For example, if I really wasn't sure about the causes of a particular movement, I would sit down and ask myself, how would you write an essay about that if that's what you were asked? And I did this all the time. I did this in the months leading up to IB exams, even during exams, I would continue to do this just so that I knew how to think about all of these different historical events. And this is a really good practice because then you can write out essay templates just with bullet points, just with a little bit of evidence. And then that way, when you actually have your exams, you have a lot of different templates in your head and lots of different formats to pull from when you're writing those all important essays. So the next subject that I'm going to talk about is how I studied for my languages. So specifically, I'll talk about French first. French was my language B, also known as the foreign language. And my main tip for studying for this particularly is to immerse yourself as much as possible. And I know a lot of you guys are probably shaking your heads. You hear this from your teachers all the time and it can be really hard, especially right now when we're in a pandemic, you are just kind of stuck in your own little bubble, your own room perhaps. So my number one tip for this is to switch your phone into the language that you're trying to learn. So my phone was in French for the entirety of the IB program, and you'd be surprised at how much you learn, even passively from entering your passcode to going through settings and trying to change things in a foreign language. And this is a really great way to pick up a lot of random technical vocabulary that could come very handy during your exams, as it did for me. Another tip that I have for the immersion process is to watch as much YouTube and Netflix and everything in the language you're trying to learn as possible, because this way you'll really be able to absorb the way that native speakers speak it, the accents, maybe the slang that you might want to use later on. And this is also fantastic because you'll hear kind of how the language is spoken and the syntax, maybe if you weren't able to previously. So I can link a few of my favorite resources for French below, my personal favorite French YouTuber that I watched during my entire IP program was Normand Fait des Vidéos, and excuse my accent, it's been a while, but his videos were always very helpful for me just because they were comical and short, but also I could watch them, I could have subtitles on if I needed it, but eventually was able to watch them without. My second tip for foreign language kind of relates to my first in immersion, and this is a tip for speaking. Speaking terrified me. I do not like speaking in front of other people, especially when I am nervous that I'm pronouncing something wrong or that I'm conjugating my verbs incorrectly, and it can be really intimidating, but my tip is to pretend like you're a YouTuber. So for example, when I was in IB, I did not have a YouTube channel, 
but I would be driving to school and I would just be talking as if I was narrating my life to nobody, to, you know, just myself. And even though I did look extremely stupid <laughs> to the cars next to me and I felt really silly doing it, this really helped build my confidence when it came to actually speaking during the individual oral assessment and during group oral assessments because I was really able to structure my sentences and not be really frazzled when I made a mistake. If you're ever, you know, even in your room by yourself, narrating what you're doing, maybe even practicing talking about an issue important to you, practicing talking about issues you've discussed in your language classes, because those will, of course, come up during your individual oral assessment. So now moving into language A, also known as your native language, mother language, or maybe if you're doing the bilingual diploma, your first language. <laughs> so this one for me was English literature. And my top tip for English literature is to annotate, annotate, annotate. And as a STEM student now, I look back and I'm like, how did I do that? How did I read so much and annotate and really analyze things? that were literature so in depth. And I really encourage you to go through text if you are doing a poetry module like I did, go through and make sure that you catch all the allusions. If you don't know what something is, look it up, figure out the significance of that particular poet, learn more about their life so that you can contextualize them when you're talking in your, I think it's called the OC and D, oral commentary and discussion. Make sure that you have points to talk about that are related to the author's life, their particular context, because that will make sure that you know that work and you know its significance much better than if you were just to simply read through. Also make sure to mark through any rhetorical devices they use. If they use a lot of simile or metaphor or allegory, if they use anaphora a lot, make sure that you mark that down. It can help to print out your papers sometimes and literally like color code the different devices that they use. That's what I did and then I would spend hours and hours just looking over those, practicing with my friends on how we were going to discuss them if that poem came up during our oral commentary and discussion. And this was really helpful. I think that ultimately it will help you know your literature and know exactly what you're going to say during that crucial 20 minute discussion. Another thing that I think is really important for language A is kind of just doing like summary sheets. For example, I did the module where you read six novels and I found it really difficult to keep them separate because a lot of them had similar themes. So I made little summary sheets of all of the main characters and the important points, any symbolism in the novels. And this was really a great way for me to look at these summary sheets and be able to kind of compare the different novels, compare the writing style, and ultimately helped me a lot when it came to writing the essays during external exams. And finally, STEM subjects. So this is very near and dear to my heart because of course in college this is pretty much all I do now so I'm going to be giving a lot of advice that is not only particularly specific for IB but also can be used in any STEM class that you take. So first off for math, math is the subject that my teachers and many people on YouTube they told me math should be the subject that is your easy seven and I know a lot of people are going to respond to that with but I'm just not good at math and first off I don't believe you because you can learn and you can be good at math. It's not a fixed thing that you're born with. You can learn to be good at it. But secondly, if you know all of the different concepts on your syllabus for math and you really know all of the different problem types that the IB commonly uses when they're talking about math, you're set up in a really good place because the IB loves to ask the same kinds of math questions year to year. For example, when I took math standard level, the one question that I knew was going to come up was binomial expansion, and I knew how to do that in my sleep. It's a really easy topic to perform once you understand it, and there's so many other topics just like this. So I highly recommend doing as many past papers as possible, noting which questions come up every single year and how you can attack those so that you get them right every single time. And talk to your teachers. They have special training and they will be able to tell you, oh yeah, you should know this topic super in depth. That is my number one tip for math is to really familiarize yourself with what the IB thinks is important because they will ask the same problem types. All right, so now moving into my science part of the video. So 
for science. My number one tip is when you're trying to memorize your things, for example, maybe fatty acid structure, amino acids, or if you're trying to memorize reaction mechanisms for chemistry, is to put them somewhere where you are going to see them every day and leave them there for months because you'll see those every day and you'll think, okay, that's just how this works. And then during the IB exam, you should be able to recall that from memory immediately because you've seen it so much. So the way that I personally did this was I took an Expo marker, a dry erase marker, and I wrote out all of the structures I needed to memorize for biology on my mirror. That way I was able to kind of passively have passively <laughs> that way i was able to passively absorb all of those different structures and concepts that i needed to know for the exam and this ultimately helped me a lot rather than trying to cram it all in the week or even the night before so my next tip when it comes to studying for science is to try and memorize processes rather than structures and this has been super helpful for me now as a college biology student i know it kind of contradicts what i just said but what I mean is rather than really like zeroing in on your particular structure and then the next step and not really focusing on how they connect, you're missing out on a lot of key concepts that the IV will probably ask you about. So for example, if you have to memorize a reaction mechanism, if you're doing chemistry or maybe just some other kind of process, make sure that you understand why each step has to happen in the order that it happens, because that's a really key way to make sure that you're getting absolutely everything out of a different process in science that you can. And then that way, when the IB asks you questions about it, you can connect it to the next step or the previous one. One thing that I find really helpful is to make summary sheets. You've seen me do these in previous videos that I can link above and below. For example, for biology, we had our special module that you get to kind of choose based on the class or the teacher chooses for you. And ours was ecology. So for example, I had one piece of paper front and back that had all the things that we needed to know for ecology that I particularly struggled with and I was able to just kind of glance at this throughout the exam period and right before I went into the exam to make sure all those concepts were fresh in my brain and I highly recommend doing this for all of your subjects not even just science but anything that you can separate into clear modules this is a great way to make sure you have all of those most important concepts right in front of you when you need them and my final piece of advice for the video very overarching is to remember that your grades don't define you. I, when I was in high school, I would have just been like, oh. okay, Sonic, I, you were on the other side. I know that IB exams are an extremely stressful process. I just want to remind you that you will get through this and that you should absolutely take breaks if you have been studying for a super long period of time nonstop. Your brain is not having the necessary rest it needs to retain the information. Make sure that you are sleeping and make sure that you get outside if you can it's really important just to take those breaks and take care of yourself and your mental health. This is something which I totally wish that I had learned earlier in life and that I think everybody struggles with at some point. So please, please make sure that you're taking care of yourself during this time. And that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful to some of you out there. Please do feel free to follow me on Instagram at Seneca Brin. And also you can DM me on there if you want, if you want to just chat about IB exams, comment down below what subjects you're taking and how exams are going to be for you this year, given the state of the world. I would love to hear how everything's been adapted. Like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified every time I post, which is going to be more frequently. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.